I realized another anomaly of Twitter Atlas that I never thought about before. And that is, I, uh, you know, the path of Twitter Atlas takes it close, closest to Jupiter on March 16th, 2026. And it's possible to forecast the distance that it will have from Jupiter on March 16th. Turns out that this distance to within four significant digits is exactly the distance from Jupiter where Jupiter's gravity wins over the Sun's gravity. So the Sun's gravity introduces a tidal effect, basically. It, uh, it rips apart any satellite of Jupiter that is beyond this distance, which is called the, hills rad the hill radius. The hill radius. Yeah, it was discovered by a physicist with, a last, with that last And name. this is around the entire circumference of Jupiter. Well, it's an, around Jupiter and out to that distance, if you put a satellite, it can remain bound to mm -hmm. Jupiter. If you put it outside, it will be torn apart from Jupiter by the sun. And, and why is that? And by the way, this distance, this distance depends on time because as Jupiter goes around the sun, the, the distance between Jupiter and the sun changes slightly. And uh, so I calculated it on March 16th, and then you find to within four significant digits, it's the same. Now, within four significant digits, it's what do you mean by that? I mean that uh, it's the number that you get uh, for the distance is identical to four digits. Now, there is some uncertainty in the forecast. The uncertainty puts it in agreement with the value that we know should be the hill radius for Jupiter on that day. Now, the the interest the plot gets uh, so so on March sixteenth, the three I atlas is going to be underneath no, that just exactly at that distance at the distance to where it will be able to be like in the orbit of Jupiter. Yeah. So there there are uh, the so called Lagrange points. If you are familiar with that, that's yeah. The, these are the points where if you put a satellite you need uh, very little uh, maneuvering or fuel supply to, main, to keep it there because there is almost zero gravity there. Mm -hmm. So the attraction to Jupiter is balanced by the gravity of the sun. And so the Lagrange points, L1 and L2, the two first Lagrange points, are exactly on the hill radius, uh, on the I hill see. sphere. But um, anyway, so it turns out that there was some non-gravitational acceleration uh, observed for 3i atlas uh, meaning that when it came closest to the sun during the month of uh, october it deviated from the original path a little bit mm -hmm. and that level of deviation i calculated allows it to come exactly at the hill radius if if we didn't have the non-gravitational acceleration it would have been off and so the question arises as to whether the non-gravitational acceleration resulted from some engine that gave it, um, provided it with adjustments to its uh, trajectory and did it close to the sun in order to get a gravitational assist from the sun so that it gets exactly where it needs to get so that it can deploy devices near Jupiter, maybe at the Lagrange points or... Uh, deploy vices? Device. De devices, like yeah. probes or something? Probes, yeah. Or, or communication devices, or maybe collect something that was put there before. I mean, I, I have no idea. But it's just a coincidence that has a likelihood of 1 in 26,000, given how many significant digits are. We're talking about, uh, about 54 uh, mi uh, million mm -hmm. kilometers from... Uh, uh, from Jupiter, and it, it, and so uh, you know, if you just say, well, in principle, it could have been anywhere, uh, because Jupiter moves around the Sun. You know, it has uh, an orbital uh, radius around mm -hmm. the Sun. So uh, the passage of three atoms could have been anywhere between uh, you know a distance of zero and a distance equal to the diameter of the orbit of Jupiter around the Sun, and then you find a chance in one in twenty six thousand that it would have come that close to the hill radius you might say coincidences happen you know i met my wife on a blind date you know right. what's the chance but this is one in twenty six thousand on top of the other anomalies that i mentioned before why would it get to the hill radius exactly to four significant digits now we will be able to tell when it gets there because we have uh, orbiters like um, the Juno spacecraft there that could monitor if anything unusual happens, if there are any satellites being deployed 
Uh, and in so order- the Juno, the Juno is going around uh, Jupiter. Yes, and we can we can tap into the Juno and get the pictures from it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Juno will also have uh, has also a radio antenna that can look for radio signals from Theta Atlas if the, the, there are any. Uh huh. Um, and NASA uh, controls all this. Yeah, but I talk. I spoke to the principal investigator of uh, Juno, and you know he is a faculty member, uh, uh, and. Uh, at the university, and uh, he told me that they will do the best they can. I was hoping they can bring it closer to Three Atlas, and in fact, Representative Anna Paulina Luna um, wrote a letter after I spoke with her on the phone about the Three Atlas, and so she very um, generously encouraged NASA to use Juno and look at the Three Atlas, which I hope they will. Mm. Um, but the point of the matter is we, with more data, we can figure out if there is really something strange going on, if it was targeting Jupiter, not the Earth. By the way, it would feel as if we are in a party, but nobody wishes to dance with us. You know, they, they all, you know, so for some reason that visitor is not, does not care about us. It doesn't care about Earth, mm -hmm. which could be for a good reason because it started this journey a billion years ago. Jupiter is the biggest planet in our solar system, was visible from a distance, and they have some mission to accomplish there. Nothing to do with the Earth, and um, you know the Earth became interesting only much, much later. Um, so I'm just saying it's an anomaly that should be looked at. Uh, and, um, you know, what I w want to, uh, in, in the coming weeks, you know, leading to December 19th, that's when 3 Atlas will come closest to Earth. So in the coming weeks, we'll have a flood of data coming from hundreds of observatories around the globe because the International Asteroid uh, Warning Network decided to uh, coordinate observations of as many observatories as possible on Earth between November 27th and January 27th. So mm. we will have a lot of data also from the space telescopes. And I want to figure out there are multiple in the, in the amateur astronomers images of three Atlas. There are multiple jets coming from three Atlas in my, in early one, I counted seven of, of them, seven jets. And the fundamental question is, are these jets simply the sublimation of pockets of ice that are illuminated by sunlight, in which case it will demonstrate that, they are, that this is a natural object, a, a rock, mm. or are they produced by thrusters, technological thrusters, in which case the speed of the gas coming out of them should be much larger because the sublimation of ice gives you at most a speed of 400 meters per second. That's the thermal speed of molecules at the surface temperature of three atlas. And uh, chemical thrusters like rockets, they operate at a few kilometers per second, a factor of 10 higher speed. Mm. And then you have ion thrusters that operate at tens of kilometers per second. That's a factor of 100 in speed. So if we measure the speed of the gas in those jets that are observed, we will be able to tell if it's natural or artificial in origin. These jets are... Yeah. Um, so, you know, and... I don't have a problem. I defined a scale between zero and 10 back in July that is called the, the lobe scale, where zero means that it's a natural object for any interstellar object, and 10 means that it's technological and a potential threat to humanity. And um, I don't mind bringing it all the way to zero if it becomes obvious that you know these jets are moving exactly at the thermal speed that we expect. The object is much smaller than I thought it is. It, it's basically smaller than a kilometer. And it happened by coincidence to be a rock on a path that goes through the plane of the planets around the sun. You know, fine. It's Where are you at in that scale right now? I was, to start with, at, at four. Um, this that was, was in July. July, August. Mm -hmm. And right now I'm asked by many people, but I, uh, I'm waiting for the data because it will be foolish of me to change my ranking when the data is just about to come forward. And so by the holidays, we should know. And uh, let's just hope that we will not get any unwanted gifts for the holidays from this object. So you're still currently at a four. And today is, what's the date today? November what? 25th. Yeah. Uh, I haven't revised it because I'm waiting for the future data, but I, I, I will bring it to, all the way down to zero if it looks like all the properties of the jets appear to be natural. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the other hand, if it uh, turns out that it comes to the hill radius of Jupiter for a good reason, because it does something there. Mm. And on, that's on in March, right? March 16th. Okay. 
Um, okay, I want to get more into these anomalies. I got to get a leak real quick. Okay. So we'll be right back, folks. 